Hello everyone. On this video, I will take you on a tour through the Microsoft SQL Server environment. In order for us to access the SQL Server, we need to connect using the SQL Server Management Studio, SSMS. SSMS is a graphic user interface that links us or that helps us to connect to our server. I already have SSMS attached to my taskbar. This makes it easier for me to access the server. I would suggest you do the same. In order to attach SSMS to your taskbar, just click on the start menu and then scroll down to Microsoft SQL Server Tools. Then you want to click on Microsoft, just right click on Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio more and here you'd have the option to pin it to your taskbar. Once you have SSMS on your taskbar, go ahead and click on it. This should take less than a minute to launch. Once loaded, you are presented with a connect to server screen. The server type is database engine, but if you click on the drop down arrow, uh, you do see that we have other services that we can connect to. Analysis services, just as the name says, um, pretty much for performing analytical functions. Reporting services for creating reports. Integration services are uh, typically for ETL functions. The same with Azure SSIS integration. If you are installed multiple servers or instances, you will be able to connect to those by clicking on the server name and choosing when you click on browse, you'll be able to select uh, any other server you may have on your system. The name of your server will be different from mine, which is displayed here. Because typically, again, it will be based on your computer. Authentication controls who has access to the server. SQL Server is able to use your Windows login details to grant you access to the server, and that is Windows authentication. Another way to gain access would be through SQL Server authentication, which means you'd have to create a user ID and a password. So I will select Windows authentication and connect to the server. Just a quick note before we get into the SQL Server environment. Now, because this video is part of my tutorial series, Learn TSQL Complete Course, which is for anyone who's looking to learn TSQL from a beginner level to an expert level, or simply looking to increase their existing SQL knowledge, this review would only be focused on getting you familiar with the environment where you'll be writing your TSQL codes. So it won't be as detailed as if um, I were teaching, a, for instance, a SQL Server Administration course. Object Explorer is used to view and manage the objects in each instance of SQL Server. By default, SQL Server is set to run once you start your computer. The green color indicates that the server is currently running. You can stop the server from running automatically by right-clicking on the server, click Stop. A pop-up appears asking you to confirm stopping the server. Click Yes, and that stops the server from running. After a few seconds, the green color changes to red, indicating the server is stopped. You would have to manually start SQL Server every time you log in. To start running the server, right click on the server, click Start, click Yes to allow changes to your computer, and Yes to start the server. You should have the green indicator back. Personally, I let SQL Server automatically start running when I boot my computer. You can disconnect from the Object Explorer by clicking the Disconnect icon. This pretty much signs you out of the server. To log back in, click Connect, select the database engine, click Connect. Another way to sign out would be to right-click on the server 
and click disconnect. And to connect back, simply click connect. Select the database engine, connect. The refresh icon is used to refresh the server. Sometimes when you make changes to the server, the action may not show up immediately. Refreshing the server makes this action visible. For example, below we have the database folder, which contains our databases within the server. Expand the folder by clicking the plus sign, and this drops down to show two databases. We will talk more about databases shortly. Let's say I decide to create a new database. Below we see that the command completed successfully. But when we look at the list of our databases, I don't see the database I just created. By refreshing the server, we now see the dog walker database appears. Databases are used to store data or information. The first database is the system databases, which has four databases, master, model, MSDB and TempDB. All four databases are used for separate purposes. For instance, without the master DB, the server cannot be started. The model database is a template database for any future database that is created. MSDB is mainly used to store system activities. For instance, when you backup your database, those backup files are stored in MSDB. TempDB is used to store temporary tables, objects, or information. As you can imagine, controlling who has access to the server and data within the server is very important. Security is where you create logins, grant and deny access to users. You can also create different roles and grant certain privileges to those server roles. A database administrator or a database owner may control who has access to the server and the databases. As mentioned earlier, objects are used to store or reference data, and here we just have more server objects. Always on I availability is a disaster recovery solution that ensures that if something was to go wrong with the database, you're able to restore the database within a reasonable downtime and also have most of the recent data before the disaster occurred. You have the option to collapse object explorer if you wish to do so. Just click on the pin. And to bring it back, click on Object Explorer. You can always adjust the size as well by extending. And you can take it back to the previous size. You can also reposition Object Explorer. The light blue color indicates the, the position Object Explorer will be placed. And uh, personally, I prefer to just have my Object Explorer on the left default position. The next feature is the query box. And this is where you write your SQL commands or queries. And to launch the box, and you would have seen me do this earlier, just click on New Query at the top of your screen. And that should launch the box. And now we can go ahead and write some queries. And I'll just create a, a, new, a new database. I'll write a query to create a new database. The name of the database will be books. And then to execute this command, just highlight the query and click execute. And what we see is that a new database is created and we know this because below we see the message that the command has been completed successfully and it also gives you the time in which this was created the database was created as well as the how long it took um, for the database to be created
I will write another query to use the books database we just created. Right now we are in the master database and that's indicated by the master we see at the top left corner of our screen. So I'll write a, a query that actually allows us to be inside of the books database. Once we execute the command, we can see that immediately our database name has changed as indicated at the top left corner of your screen. Again, now it's showing books as opposed to master database that we were in previously. Next, I will suggest we insert a line number in our query box. Having a line number can be helpful when trying to identify an error in our queries. To illustrate this, I'll write a query that, uh, that would give an error message. The reason this query resulted in, a, in an error message is because we don't currently have a table with the name customers and uh, the message we get in below is saying an invalid object name. What we want to focus on is the line number. So here we see it says message 200, level 16, state one, which we don't have to worry ourselves about. The most important thing here is we see line three. So this is pointing to us that there is an error on the third line of our query. At the moment, because our query is very short, it's just three line, we're able to easily see this and we can go back and say, oh, okay, I don't have a table called customers, maybe I'm in the wrong database, and then we can make that correction. But imagine if you have a query of 10, 15, 20 lines, and that's very possible and that does occur, or if you have a script with hundreds of lines of queries, trying to find a line number would be very difficult. To add line numbers, click on Tools, Options, and then click Text Editor, select Transact SQL, and check the box for line numbers. OK. And now we see that our box is now numbered. And with this, it's way easier for us to locate a line number that has an error in our query. And just to confirm that the database we created, the books database, uh, exists in our server, we can go to our database. And um, we'd have to refresh. And now we see the books database as well. One other tool that may pop up when you launch your SQL server is the Solution Explorer. The Solution Explorer is used to run projects within the server. At the moment, you see it says zero projects. That's because we don't have any project on or in our server. Once one is created, you would see the, the name of the project listed here. This will be all for reviewing Microsoft SQL Server environment. If you like to learn T-SQL, which is unavoidable for running a Microsoft SQL Server or for working within the server, uh, you can watch my tutorial series, Learn T-SQL Complete Course. In the series, you will go from having no knowledge or little knowledge of T-SQL to mastering T-SQL. Thanks for watching this video. Talk to you soon.